Hi, I have with me Angie and Beth of Divine Love Group, Angie, Angela Rose. Sorry, Angela. Um, okay. And Angela is going to bring some messages forth for us today. Just for a moment. So first and foremost, each and every one of you at this time are being shown many openings within yourselves. The way that the heart is accepting the lessons that are coming forward, every single one of you has a point and purpose within each lesson to which you will be shown along the way. We wish to express that the ability to process the lessons more rapidly opposed to previous energy where you may necessarily not move through with such ease. We ask for you at this time to open your heart and allow through trusting yourself that you are not alone. You are supported and it can be as easy as you would like it to be. With this being said, you can also allow for giving me air quotes, suffering and strife to come from the lessons you are going through. The basis upon which these lessons are stemming is how you would say, letting things go, clearing yourself from any and all attachments, simply putting things that just do not serve you. Once you move through the energy of letting go and understanding that your best days are to come. You will in turn be grateful for that which you let go. There is nothing small nor large in comparison. What we mean by that is it could be as simple as just a thought form in a present moment to something that completely encompasses your existence based upon how you have had previous experiences through a thought form. Does this make sense? Yeah, absolutely. So we wish for yeah. the observation through each moment to be open and honest with oneself, not creating anything extra based upon that feeling or knowing that was this something. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. 
but the fact that you're acknowledging it. I'm a Christian to tell you it's us. You do a body and at the hemlock. Sing Shanate, say, say, shouldn't talk about it. Stick a tie. You're very kind. Two of mine, I hear the door. He got it. It's very healing. <sighs> Finishing that statement. It's very simple when you don't question what is by just allowing your truest nature to come forward in every present moment and accepting that through your surrender and your trust within yourself and your team, however you wish to see that, you could see it as the universe, you could see it as source, you could see it as your guides, just yourself. There's, there's no difference. All is one. I just ask for you to be more patient, kind, and loving. And honor the energy that is here supporting you at this time. To all encompass yourself fully and completely. And to let go of anything that does not make you feel whole. Thank you. Do you have any questions? So what, um, what can people do to choose outside? It's always a deeper choice than just a surface level mental choice. How can people choose the easier path versus the tougher path? There is no one way depending on the person, the easier path may open up several layers that will ultimately lead to the opposite because of the reflection. So say, for example, needing to heal something within oneself and there's one opportunity to do that that may open up other things within the person that they also need to address based upon that person and where they're at currently in their own energy, trust and surrendering. It's not necessarily a level we speak of, but it's a comfort. Then that person will choose which way to go depending on the acceptance of the lesson at hand on a particular scale. I asked for my filter to step aside. I asked for my filter to step aside. Please be clear. Everything is based on the perspective. If seeing something as a lesson and not finding the honor for oneself within it causes a problem, that lesson may move away or step aside based upon the energy that person's either accepting or denying more so we wish to give this example you're given the opportunity in in present moments certain situations to see things wholly like in totality if you are able to honor that there is something within yourself that is not quite as you would like it to be. 
and realizing that the synchronicity and everything that's happening around you is supportive of healing that in which you do not appreciate about yourself. If you are able to see it in that perspective, you can actually choose to clear it much faster based upon seeing all the pieces at play. If you take yourself into a victimhood mentality and not honor yourself, seeing that there's something not quite the way you would like it to be, and with that missing the opportunity to appreciate the synchronicities and the rest of the parties involved that will come forward to assist you in moving through this more with ease and quickly, you would kind of miss that window of opportunity for that moment. Does that make any sense? Does that answer your question? It does. I, I also, um, it's also coming to mind. I, I know in my own journey, there's been a huge help by simply acknowledging that divine timing and patience um, are actual beings, not blockages that are like pain in our way. <laughs> Is there anything, um, anything further that you can kind of help people understand and expand upon that with? When you mean beings, you mean people or entities? Entities, they, they are living energy. Correct, but can you reference your example? So I used to always feel like um, both, more so divine timing, which lends itself to patience, but connecting to and viewing it, it's a perspective shift as um, an actual being, not as something that is a blockage that we've put in our own way or that somebody else has put in our way, however you want to look at it. Correct. Okay, thank you. So, yes, the, there's several parts to that as well. The one that is they're showing me the most well, is our perception or perspective. Some can see entities as a negative and that they are attaching to do harm. Some can perceive, which this is the way that I believe you are asking the question in the divine timing, is within oneself when you realize that there are entities or energies that are outside of your own that may not actually necessarily be outside of your own. They are here to provide something that you could process by being aware within your own energy. This is ultimately the goal of knowing when you feel pure and whole or when there is something that is feeling like a blockage, but only because it hasn't been completely made into our awareness as in accepting that all energy including entities, which I do not like that word. Um, are here to bring forth more interpersonal awareness. just a moment. Ultimately comes back to judgment. And 
believing that because something has come into our energy that essentially we would have had to allow. Why would we allow for something that could reference itself as a blockage? Well, this is simply the journey. This is the same as all experiences that we manifest and bring into our reality, all to just have the experience. Sometimes it can just be just that. When we have a perspective of our energy, maybe in a sense, not fully connecting to our own energy, a lot of outside allowance of influence can also create the entity or create the feeling that something is there, which we may just put there ourselves just so that we can work through it and feel the difference of having all alternate energy in our space. Then seeing the, the opposite, which is when we can clear and move through any blockages. Hence the divine timing part is your perspective on the situation and your energy then now and tomorrow when you move through it and you no longer feel that it's something outside of you. And then you can have that validation of I've worked through it. I no longer have any other energy. That's not mine. You love it. You let it go and come back to the tomorrow of when you can wake up and feel whole until another lesson comes along and you need to experience something else. And an energy may come forward to do the exact same thing, except for at this moment, you've realized that it feels different. The energy is either welcomed or not welcome. At a certain time, you won't experience unwelcomed energy because you will at that point own from your entire aura space and you, you won't feel anything that is negative. You will only feel the positive. Does that answer your question? Yes. <clears throat> Hold on a second. Um, so, it, which sounds to me like movement through, I'm just going to try to warp it in here, uh, movement through, you know, your lessons to your full self-empowerment, no? Yes. <clears throat> um, and and keeping in mind that you know this journey is is becoming new for some and it's and it's old hat for others, but it's still the same kind of cycle when something comes into your awareness and you know you wanted to clear it up. It's still the same type of cycle. It just gets easier as you go. So can you speak a little on that? For, for people who um, yes. may be a little discouraged. Okay. <clears throat> so, thank you. Well, I have a vision. Addition to what I said. So referencing new or old, it's all irrelevant at this point. Based upon that question. So the discourages is actually the, the point in, in which she's referencing. Okay, so What is the difference between someone that's discouraged, that is aware of the fact they're going through a lesson or an experience and the one that is aware, but thinks that there's nothing to be discouraged about? They're essentially both stuck in their, in their own way. 
because the awareness and the allowance that this is an experience and that we are never going to be finished. It's breaking it down into the simplicity and the actual beauty of each step of the way, essentially. So if you're feeling discouraged, you're, you are getting the lessons, you're getting shown, you're getting mirrored, you're, you're seeing reflections, you're more than likely getting very triggered. Step back, pick one part of what makes you discouraged. Say a trigger, for example. Or just say, yes, no, we will stay with trigger. Look within that trigger, release all pieces outside of yourself and ask yourself the question of why I was triggered. Why am I being affected in this way? If you want to blame anything outside of yourself, stop. Sit back in that space, look back within, because you just opened up another can of worms, if you will. Mm, Jesus. So start writing if you need to write because you had just opened up three new phases of what you need to move through. So discouragement only comes because we have an expectation that it's supposed to be a certain way. Typically because we've seen someone else say that theirs was this and it, oh, we have a similarity, but there's no journey, no one journey, no two journeys. None, none of you are the same in that sense. Once you begin to look at each individual piece that creates your discouragement, it will actually flip it to the positive. There's nothing wrong with being discouraged. Don't take us the wrong way. But the positive side of that is I appreciate being discouraged in order for me to see what is creating that within me that makes it seem that I'm less than compared to someone else. Say you don't have social media. Say you don't have anyone else in your environment or in your life that is going through what you perceive to be the same type of a situation. And you still feel discouraged. Ask yourself, what is, what is discouraging you about this? And once again, go back inside. Everything is inside. But when you clear your mind, and you're able to have that awareness of your body, of your energy, of your mind, what is happening, why, and answer your own questions, which you all will, the discouragement will start to fade and you will become very drawn and driven to get through each task much more with love and compassion for yourself because you're just learning how to do this in this incarnation at this moment in time. Just like you were the last time and the time before that, and the time before that on another lesson. Each time it gets simpler, depending on the person, it also gets more in depth, but you will grow a tolerance to be able to see things more clearly, not allowing necessarily for the word discouragement. You still may suffer from frustration and lack of patience for oneself, but that's all okay. Just see it through your own eyes. You can ask for guidance, but just be mindful. If it doesn't feel right to you, it probably isn't. And just have love and patience and kindness for yourself. And everything will clear up. And as soon as it does, you'll, <clears throat> thank you. you'll be able to reflect back on what you just went through. And you should smile. It should make you feel completed, creating space for something else to come forward. You are able to ask your guides, your higher self, however you reference your own energy to show you how this all is put together once you are through it. You can also ask for guidance in a different way. Just be very specific on what you're looking for to help you through each time you are experiencing something like this. 
the more and more that you center and locate it within what is in your perspective causing you any grief, you actually, by doing that, are becoming more and more aware, more grounded, more connected. And you won't, just like the discouragement, you won't see it as grief. You won't see it in that way. You'll appreciate it because without it, you wouldn't be able to come through it. Does that answer your question? So essentially there's not, I'm sorry. Essentially there is not a difference between those that have done this for a long time and those that are new because it all works the same way, but each person's path is different. So the outside influence that does cause impatience or an expectation that things are supposed to be a certain way, regardless of the brand new one that's awakened today and the one that's been awake for 20 years, it doesn't, it doesn't change anything because it all comes back to their own perspective, their own awareness, their own patience and kindness for oneself, their own reality. Discouragement thus only comes from thinking not feeling that it's supposed to be a particular way. Yeah. So being in the head as opposed to the heart. Correct. Very, very good. Okay. Well, I think um, I, I don't have any more questions. If, if you want to come out of it, you can come out of it. Unless, do you have a question? Any more questions? Well, I guess more of a clarification. I, I think um, it's not, well, not clarification, but it sounds a lot like what you just said is um, something a lot more in depth of what, what we briefly talked about in, uh, recently, Andy, um, about it's just a, a different way of putting it. So I want to, I feel like I need to put it out there. Um, sometimes lowering your spiritual bar right. allows mm -hmm. room for significant growth. Um, and it, you know, obviously all comes down to expectations and, and whatnot and being able to celebrate those small wins, but just exactly sometimes the easiest thing to do is lower your own spiritual bar and you'll see significantly more growth by doing that. Yes. And that is the same as just being aware, because if you have the way you're saying it, your spiritual bar raised so high. That is the exact same of having the expectation that I'm always high vibrational. I, as myself, have went through this journey. I do not have anything that I need to deal with. If I do, I do it quickly and blah, 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 blah. So being in the awareness that we appreciate bringing forward any lessons, anything that is within us that is not fully healed, that is taking up space, not allowing for better, brighter to come in. So that is essentially the goal. So yes, lowering your spiritual bar is the equivalent to saying being real with yourself. Because the more and more you focus on anything that is holding you back from being the best version of yourself, needs to be handled, period, no matter what it takes, whether it's solitude, whether it's, you know, joining some group just to let people hear you for a little while, but ultimately it comes back to trusting, surrendering, and being as honest with yourself as possible that we all have to go through this. No one came here completely done. That's why we came here. So yes, if, if you need to say it that way, that you're lowering your spiritual bar just to get yourself to a space to process appropriately. And so be it. That all comes back to awareness. And with that, we are proud of you. Does that make more sense? Oh, it always made sense. I just sometimes offer a, a different way of saying it because it reaches more people. That's definitely Yeah, she's, if you wanna... she's ready. Okay.
It's a bright sunshiny day. We can't see you. All right, I'm sorry. <laughs> it went, I went bye bye. You did good. That wasn't bad at all. See? It was oh, we're still recording, but I wouldn't leave that in if we if we use this. Um thank you for joining us. We love you all. Everybody say bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. So I pulled some cards before Angela started channeling, and and I'm gonna get Beth to do it if she wants. Um, from did. the um, from the Isis Oracle deck, I have a friend who bought me. I'm just it was Beth. Um, <laughs> <laughs> So the first card I pulled was uh, Mother of Life, Nourishment of the Golden Grain Mother, which was I thought was really cool. It, it just kind of reminds me of Gaia, of course. But um, we can sometimes fall into existing and doing rather than truly living. We, we only it. know. Yeah, because and I'll tell you what, we only know that this has happened when suddenly our life seems dry, depleted, filled with tasks. Or it feels like we are stuck in a rut or a habit or habit um, that may have been comfortable but is becoming stifling and suppressing. Isis, the mother of life, holds the ability to restore even the most numb, resistant, and difficult circumstances and people back into life. She calls to you now, seeking to bestow gifts of life upon you. Be bold and brave. Open your arms and receive. And this is really funny because, you know, in preparing for the full moon thing that I do a full moon thing all the time, uh, the energies that came to me are twofold. Um, feel the fear and do it anyway and be ready for surprises. And in this portal energy, whatever, I don't feel like it's one or the other. I don't feel like you're either the feel the fear and do it anyway, or the person getting surprised. I feel like it's both. I feel like it's, both energies at the same time. So I thought that was really cool. I only have three more cards, but let's see. Ancient power mysteries. Hear the, hear the rattle of Isis playing. I didn't look this up yet, hold on. Ancient power, that's easy. Um, the rattle of Isis, the sistrum is playing in the hand of the goddess now. And this made me think of sound. You know how you sound. I think this is very relevant. I think this is something that, and I'm not, I haven't even read the rest yet, but sound, I think we need to really start examining what sound does vibrationally for us, especially, you know, it can calm you, it can heal you, it can agitate you. So it's just a thing. It's a thing that's kind of prevalent for me because I do, I, I do sound. I just wanted to let you know, like, that's totally validating for me because like I was telling you, um, I went and took a salt bath and just grounded and everything before, but for the first time, cause I channeled for myself in the bathtub, just kind of guiding me on, on who's coming and why, and kind of, you know, that type of thing. Um, but I, I hummed my way into mm. that state of, but I have, yeah, of course, you know, I do ohms and stuff like that, but not, it came, it, it came out of nowhere. Like I just got myself into that vibration and just like, I felt it through my, my chest, you know, obviously that initial hum, but then I took it, you know, it just came all the way up where I could literally feel it in my teeth. And then in my nose, just from that vibration, like, so I just want you validated for me that, and then you went like, that, yeah, that, so is, that is something this. I can use. So you can you sense it with your inner he hearing? Its vibration reaches through your crown chakra and enters your body, initiating you into great ancient power mysteries of sound, creativity, and healing. That's so funny. <laughs> um, this is a time when words and music will become increasingly important on your spiritual path and healing journey. Oh, how funny! Okay. Epic. And then I got goddess of 10,000 names, which 
you know, this card, before I even look at it, what it means to me, it says Isis, endless emanations of the priestess. It just reminds me of one time when my guide said to me, you've had many names. Right. I've had many names. It doesn't matter what you call me. So it's letting go of the labels too, of all the, I've been this, 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 and this. Yeah. Yes. Good God. Yes. All right. 66. Isis with many names, forms, associations, and expressions is referred to as the goddess of 10,000 names. A name holds power. (laughs) No, we were just talking about that. Uh, It defines and energizes or limits the names, faces, and roles that you play are just one part of your being, yet you exist beyond them, beloved initiate, as a vast being. You are currently re- realizing that you are not limited by previous identities you held. <laughs> Instead, you are becoming more of your whole self. I love this. It's beautiful. Um, enjoy the uncovering of even more of you. That's it. That is amazing. And then the last one is portal of light, which is just perfect with all these cards, right? I love it. Portal of light. She glides on wings through time and space. I love that visual. (laughs) Okay. Um, and you know what I thought when I saw this, right? I was like, it just reminds me of all the, all the astral traveling that you know, you like to do and stuff. And I'm thinking, I haven't been doing that very much. <laughs> I kind of miss that. All right, portal. Um, it is only this physical reality that is bound by time and space. You are being conscious on levels beyond the physical world. You are guided to work with your healing powers beyond the confines of time and space. And to allow your sense of self to expand, it is safe for you to do this now. <laughs> you, in other words, I guess you guys have gone through enough shit shows. Now you can do it all. Go on. <laughs> right. You will not become ungrounded through such spiritual growth. You are not leaving your earthly awareness. You are instead adding to it. So that's what I got. So it's your turn, Beth. Go Yay. Ahead. Go, Beth. It's your birth. Do you want me to unrecord or keep going? No, no, keep, going. keep going. I don't care. Um, okay. So I only pulled two. One is from the Wisdom of the Oracle. Um, and it's the never ending story. So oh, this one. Jesus God. <laughs> That's so funny because she talked about that. Go ahead. Right. So it's it's self-criticism, the wounded ego, and unnecessary dramas, and really letting like fear be um a voice because you don't acknowledge, recognize any other voice. It's like fear is all that the voice, not you, all the voice knows. Right. And so you continue down that path. And then sort of, it seems like in answer to that, in some place, like we've all been either for the last year or coming up, you know, everybody's in, in various places with this, but it was, um, this is from the goddess guidance Oracle cards. Uh, quiet time, <laughs> which is beautiful. Um, S-I-G-E, Siege. I'm not really sure how you, how you pronounce her name, to be honest. So apologies. But, um, and it says at the bottom, take some quiet time alone to rest, meditate, and contemplate. Um, you know. And that comes back to... All the answers come in silence. <laughs> yeah. And, and within. I mean, that's, that's let go of everything that's outside of you that's not... I mean, nobody knows what you're going through, but you, so you're the only one that can answer your own question. So that's epic. Yeah. Good job, yeah. ladies. I know just to be clear though, I didn't pull these, these, I just did the kind of the shuffling and these four flopped out and like right at the beginning. So I was like, okay, that's our cards. <laughs> yeah. That's what I, yeah. Same. So, that's, that's what I call okay. them. Okay. But like it's yeah. same, same process. Yeah. Yeah, these four wanted to come out. All four of them. I love it. We did awesome. That was awesome. Okay. Good job, girls. I'm going to stop re- recording now. Thank you. Where is it? 